Chapter 29. When we get home, I ask my mom to put me in bed. I refuse to eat my lunch. I try to sleep, but quiz questions and why questions are flying through my head. Why wouldn't they call me? Why didn't they tell me they were going out to breakfast? Why can't I be like everyone else? I finally just cry into my pillow. Butterscotch nudges me with her nose, but I just ignore her. They left me on purpose. How could they do that? My friends left me on purpose. I feel like stomping on something. Stomping and stomping and stomping, but that makes me even madder because I can't even stomp. I can't even get mad like a normal kid. Penny peeks into my room. When she sees I'm awake, she climbs up on my bed and snuggles close to me. She smells like bubble bath. She tries to count my fingers, then tries to count her own, but all she knows is one, two, three, five, so she says that over and over. Then she tries to teach Doodle to count two Doodle, two. I feel myself relaxing a little. Oh, here you are, Penny, she dad says from the doorway. Are you making Dee Dee feel happy? Dee Dee's a good girl, she tells dad. Yes, she is. The very best, dad agrees. Are you okay, Melody? He asks as he comes over to stroke my hair. I nod. I point to Dad's wrist, which is wrapped in a bandage. Yeah, it hurts, he says. That was a really dumb thing to do, but it made me feel a little better. I nod. He lifts Penny from my bed with his right arm. Ready for a snack, Miss Penny? He asks her. Hot dogs, she demands. Do you want me to fix you something, Melody? I'm not hungry. I shake my head and point at the clock. Maybe later, Dad says. I smile and he quietly leaves the room with my sister. The phone rings. I hear mom say, oh, hello, Mr. Deming. She walks into my room with the portable phone by her ear. Her palm is tight around the phone and I can see the veins popping out of the top of her head. No, I don't understand, mom says. Why didn't you call us? She listens for a minute and then says as angrily as I've heard her, we could have easily been at the airport an hour earlier. We could have been there at dawn. She's almost shouting at Mr. Deming. Do you know how devastated our daughter is? There's a pause. Yes, I am aware she's the brightest person on the team. The word is was. There is no is. Mom pauses to listen. You'll make it up to her? You've got to be kidding me. Mom hangs up on Mr. Deming and throws the phone into the corner. She wipes her eyes, pulls a tissue from the box on my desk, and sits down in a chair next to my bed. I listen to her blow her nose, and then I turn over. Melody, she says, if I could make your hurt go away. I'm blinking back tears. She pulls me into her lap. It isn't the snuggly fit that it used to be, but her hug still feels good. She rocks me and hums softly, and finally I fall asleep listening to the rhythm of my mom's heart.